welcome to this edition of All About Hopkinton, the original HCAM series created to bring you the people and organizations that help make our community the great place that it is. I'm your host, Mary Arnott. There are a lot of people dedicating their time, energy, and talents to improve some aspect of life in our town. I'm honored to be sitting here with them and sharing their stories with you. Joining me now is Amy Beck, the director of the Hopkinton Senior Center. Welcome, Amy. Thank you. I'm very glad you could be here today because I know your schedule is very demanding. There's so <laughs> much going on at the Senior Center. We are busy at <laughs> yeah. the Senior Center. All good things, too, and we're going to get into all of those programs. But I'd like to start with just uh, asking you a little bit to share some of your background and anything you want about how you came to the Senior Center, whatever you feel like telling us. Okay. Well, I've been with the Senior Center for about six and a half years now. Um, I started out as a volunteer coordinator. It was perfect for me at the time. Um, I had my youngest starting kindergarten, my oldest starting college, and it was time for me to get back into the workforce. So I started off as a volunteer coordinator, and about a year later, the assistant director position opened up. And so I've been doing the programming and working with transportation for about five years, and then now uh, fortunate enough to be in the role of the uh, director. and really loving it. It's been, I don't know, it's, it's, it's wonderful working with seniors, working in the town, living in the town. It's, it's a great. Well, I'm very glad that you got the position. Oh, I think you do you. a wonderful job and you did in your other positions as well for, you know, my knowing you from being over the senior center myself as a volunteer occasionally. Right. And I'm really glad that you're the director. There well, is so you. much going on and now you have a lot of more programs and things I know you want to look into and, and do. So we have a lot to talk about. And I brought one of the great things about the Senior Center is how you let everybody know about what's going on, which is the newsletter, The Hilltopper. Right. So we've got that. We can refer to some things that are going on, too. So where shall we start? We want to start with, uh, well, let's talk about The Hilltopper a little bit. Um, how this gets put together, it's so well organized. It, visually, it just is so attractive. You can easily find things. So well, how does this all come together? That's good to hear, thank you. Um, yeah, we work very hard on the newsletter. Um, everyone pretty much contributes a little bit of something. Um, we have, in, in the newsletter, if you look at it, we've got all our activities, all the programs that we're involved in, and um, trips that are in there. So it's got a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. um, we write up or we have people who are doing the programs give us some information. We have history talks, so they would maybe tell us what that's going to be about so we can be accurate in what we produce. But it is a group effort um, spearheaded by Judy Alessio, who's our administrative assistant, who does a fabulous job of putting it together. She takes all the information and is moving for days, moving things around to, to fit it all in. So, And just as, you know, if someone's looking at it and there's very nice pages and everything, but you can just glance quickly at the calendar and exactly. see everything that's going on. Um, if you know, if you don't want to flip through the whole thing, you can just go to the calendar, and it's all there. What times? And it's just wonderful. And of course, we there's space for some of the sponsors and things, which is right. nice too. But there's so much going on. Um, so that's look at your hill topper if you want to know. Well, and you can you get it in the mail if you're 60 and over. Um, you're on a mailing list, and we're trying to get it down to 59 so that we can catch everyone before they're. 60 and, and mm -hmm. hopefully we'll be coming to the Senior Center. And we do have um, our, um, our calendar is a great way to look at it. And there are, um, I guess on the front cover, there's a glossary that shows you what pages. So if there's something mm -hmm. specific that you want to get in there. But the, as far as we do mail to the seniors, but you are able to get it online. So anyone who is interested can certainly go to the town website and pull up the Senior Center pages and find our newsletter. I do that as well, but I like to also look at the one, one that comes I'm in the mail. I'm a paper person, so <laughs> <laughs> I like holding one in my hands and being able to look at it. Yeah. Um, let's talk about some of the programs. I know that you do get a lot of, you have your regular programs that mm -hmm. are scheduled. Uh, you have a wonderful staff and team of volunteers that help make the right. Hopkinton Senior Center what it is. And some of the programs you invite people in, guest speakers. 
We How do you decide on that? Well, that's always a good question. A lot of times, to be honest, I, I keep an eye on what other people are doing. I try to listen to what people around the center are wanting. Um, if they know that, um, and this isn't the guest speakers, but if someone's wanting more craft classes, we're always looking for someone else to come in and teach something. Um, so sometimes we're just trying to go off of what's seasonally happening. We have something coming in uh, April. We have a baseball talk for, and it'll be there before opening day. And so that's exciting. Um, but you know, we, we go by the season, we go by what's out there and what people are asking for. Um, we do have a music series uh, we bring in. And I try to find, we have groups that meet at the senior center. And what I've been trying to do is what, what would they be liking to, to do? Uh, our chorus meets every Wednesday. And so we bring in someone once, once in the fall, once in the spring, who will come and talk about different um, artists. We have one coming up, I think, about Frank Sinatra. And so, you know, we use that time of, of what's popular and what's interesting. It's the same thing when we tie it into our trips. Um, I talk to the quilters, and is there a show that they would like to go to? And sometimes we do special trips with that. And sometimes our trips are just trips that we've been thinking we people are wanting to do and don't get to do often. So speakers the same way. You know, I kind of try to take the pulse and see what people are interested in and I keep an eye on what's happening around in other communities as well and what's been popular and, and works for them. Well, there are many, many good programs and trips. And by the way, people should know that when there is a charge, it's very reasonable. I mean, there's so many programs that are obviously free you walk in and you participate and have a good time and you, just, you, know, you can pick out something you want to do and it doesn't cost you anything. And some of the programs that you have to charge a little bit, mm -hmm. it is a little bit. Well, if you were to look at what's available if you were going to a health club and looking for an exercise class, you certainly pay far less at our senior center. Mm -hmm. And we're not making money. Um, we're certainly providing services, and, and what people pay helps knock down the cost of it. But it certainly isn't pays for the whole program. Right. And we are very fortunate to have a friends group who helps support us in that way, and the town support us as well. Well, let's talk a little bit about then the, the mm -hmm. financial support that's required to uh, keep all the programs in this beautiful center operating. Because I can remember when it was in the basement of the town hall. We won't go back there. <laughs> we've but, come a uh, long way <laughs> since then. Yeah, we've <laughs> certainly come a long way since then. But it is uh, a big financial responsibility. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you mentioned the Friends of the Senior Center. How else are funds um, accumulated to keep things going? Well, we do take donations, so if people are interested in supporting things that are happening at the Senior Center, we love that. Um, I know right now we have a veterans breakfast once a month for our veterans, and people do like to sponsor that. And so they would contact me, and we would let them know what's involved and what's the cost, and, and they can sponsor that for our veterans. Um, we don't really have people sponsor specific programs, although sometimes we do have outside groups who are have been willing to do a talk and, and pay for that for us. But the Friends is a great organization as far as raising money. We have our thrift store, or they have their thrift store at the Senior Center, and they raise money for our programs and anything that we need. If we want to bring in a band to play or a speaker, um, but people can certainly donate either items to the thrift store to be sold. Mm -hmm. They can um, make uh, financial donations. You know, however it works. You know, and and we, like we said, talk. I'm sorry, charge a few lower price costs, you know, but it, it is definitely an organization that's run by our volunteers and by our friends who take care of us and the town. Okay. So if you're, you know, someone's not able to give financially, they can certainly give of their time. Absolutely. Uh, it's a wonderful place to work, whether you're an employee or a volunteer, but uh, if you're not able to donate money, then donate your time and get involved. Yeah. We are very fortunate. We have about 160 volunteers, and some come in once a year, some come in once a week, some come in every day. We are, whatever people want to give time-wise, we are happy to work with. And they do it in a lot of varieties. Um, sometimes they are a teacher of a class, and they give their time to teach pottery. Um, sometimes our instructors are paid, but some of them are donating time, whether it's a book group time, whether it is... Um, you know, a class time, whether it is helping in our dining room. We have lunch every day, five days a week, and we have volunteers who help serve and work in the kitchen. 
And now you have a day of extended hours, which is wonderful. Let's we talk do. about Wednesdays at the Senior Center. Wednesdays are very exciting for us. Um, we are really excited about the switch that we made in March. We have uh, added about three hours to Wednesday. So we are now open till 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening. And we have added at least, well, this month and we've added one class and we're going to be adding another exercise class. So we have a pound class, which if you've never done pound, it is loud and exciting. And what's nice is the instructor can work with you at whatever level you are. So you might be in a chair doing it or you are squatting and pounding the floor with your drumsticks. Um, we also are hoping to add yoga and we have um, an art class that will be a six-week art class that will be coming also. So we are slowly expanding the hours and what we're doing, we figured if we do it slowly, we'll make sure that we're not going to fall over ourselves. Um, but the Senior Center is open. We have volunteers in, this is, we have students sometimes who volunteer in the computer lab and we on Wednesday evening have a student, has a, have a student who does come in and volunteer for us helping if anyone has any questions with computers or technology. So we've got everything open, we're just adding slowly. And I do want to mention it's really wonderful how you recognize the volunteers every year with an appreciation dinner uh, to say thank you. And that room is full with tables and people and every, talking, you know, of all the volunteers that help out. And, we, That's a wonderful event. Oh, I'll tell you, it's one we look forward to, and we could not do it without the volunteers that we have. We are so fortunate that people do give their time and their energy to the senior center. And, you know, a lot of them are seniors themselves, so they're not just younger people coming in, although we always are happy to have them. But it is great to see what we can do with our seniors because of them. Before I forget, I wanted to mention on the programs and the trips, sometimes you have to make sure you get on the list. You call mm -hmm. in and be, you know, reserve a spot for that. Right. And um, if you're not a senior or you're not in Hopkinton, are you still able to participate in the programs and trips? Absolutely. Um, what we offer is product. First, first call is for seniors in Hopkinton, mm -hmm. um, but as space is available, we do let people from outside. We do let um, younger people come in to do programs if there's space available, but they have to understand that we're here for the seniors um, first, uh, but that is expanding and our evenings are expanding and that allows younger seniors to come too, so who may be working during the day. Well, you mentioned the computer lab, mm -hmm. which um, is wonderful that you get young people in there to help us seniors understand <laughs> those monstrous things called computers and technology. But um, you also have programs, I know, that you know about how to be safe on the Internet, um, how to be safe against scammers and things like that. So that all ties in. Um, I also wanted to ask you uh, specifically about some of the things that seniors struggle with and how the Senior Center helps them um, in the way of outreach programs or in the way of getting people in that can talk to them about situations they may be experiencing. Yeah, we have, um, we're very fortunate, we have two outreach workers who work with seniors um, and the idea, the idea is that we want everyone to age in place. We want people to be able to stay in their home and in their community for as long as they can and want to. And so our outre outreach workers do just that. They help our seniors by either helping them find the services that they need to stay in their homes or helping them find the right location if that is what it comes to. But they are there to help with fuel assistance, they are there to help with anything that a senior has a question about. Um, and we have two that are able to, to really talk with them and work with them and families as well. So if you're a family member who is concerned about a parent who's living in the town, they're certainly willing to talk with you and, and help you with what you may need to get for your family member. And at the time we're doing this show, it's close to income tax season, and right. you even have a program where they can come in and get help with their income taxes. We do. We have the AARP comes in, um, and they do, uh, they do taxes for seniors who, uh, there are certain requirements that they have to meet. Um, I don't think you can own rental properties and all of that, but someone who needs help with their taxes can certainly come in. And we, we have the tax group come in. We have um, people who come in and talk to you about safety. You mentioned that. 
We do have the police and fire who will come in and do programs about helping seniors with worries or concerns that they have about scams or about that. And, and our computer lab is willing to work with people about that as well and helping them navigate how to avoid the scams that come through the internet or through you know whatever means they come through and they seem to be coming at us from all directions these days oh yes that's for sure I do remember too one of the safety programs I think there was fire and police there where they were passing out things that you could with a magnet on it put on your refrigerator mm -hmm. that has all of your, your emergency contact information you can list your um, any medications you're on. So in the event that 911 is called, they have the information right, right there and available. So. Which is great. And, and the outreach workers would actually help people put their file of life, it's called, together oh, so a, that all the information yeah, is, is there for them. Um, and it is ready so that in an emergency you can grab it and go. Now, uh, for the out, outreach uh, support, do you need to make appointments? Uh, that always is helpful. Um, we have two, so generally someone's in the office, but they do take appointments and talk to people that way as well. But, you know, if they're free and they can help you when you come in, they'll certainly help you then. And I understand, too, on a little more happier note, you have things like uh, you can get a haircut if you want to schedule yes, a haircut. Or let's see, what else is it? We uh, have chair massage and haircuts yes. and... Um, you know what? A, occasionally, we've had kids Some come over. Yes, yeah. we we did that in the past. We've also had people come and um, from some of the schools like Keefe Tech, and they've done um, nails for people and stuff like that. So we've we've brought in different things at different times, um, and that reminds me we should bring that one back. So you have a lot of good programs. I know they come and go, but as I said in the beginning, this. Hilltopper is so full of things. I don't know if you have room for anything else to add, but <laughs> that is always the trick. How yeah. do we fit it in? <laughs> Let's talk about a little bit about the uh, lunch program because I know in the Hilltopper, in the back page, you always there's a list of what's being offered each day in terms right. of lunch. Um, and so, do you need reservations, and how does the lunch program work? We d we do need reservations um, because it works. Um, and so you can make reservations in advance, you can be put on a regular schedule, or you can call that morning. Um, if you wait too long, then we may not have enough of the main meal um, because we are cooking to the counts that we have when we uh, have people registered and sign up. Okay. And uh, there's a couple of seatings, right? So mm -hmm. if you call in, that you can... Well, yeah, we start serving at 11.30, uh, so we have an 11.30 and a 12, and so people can come at 11.30, 12. We try to keep it on that so that we can filter people through the dining room and, and let the next group in. We can serve, I, I think we've had days where, depending on what we're serving, um, some days are obviously more popular than others, but everything is cooked here at the senior center of that day. It is not brought in through a Meals on Wheels service. It is cooked fresh in our dining room. Yeah, and I can attest that it's worth the five dollars. Absolutely. No, I mean, five dollars you go in and you get a wonderful lunch, and there's such a variety. I mean, you just look at like meatloaf one day, cashew chicken and, and noodles, fish of the day, pot roast. I mean, these are things I can't even make. <laughs> <laughs> Lasagna, I mean, seafood, Alfredo, they're wonderful. Um, well, and what's nice is they have an option, too. So we have the, the main meal, but you can also have choose a sandwich. So if you, we've got a different, several different three or four options for sandwiches or a salad plate as well. So you don't have to have the main meal. You can certainly come and have a sandwich if you prefer, or if, mm -hmm. you, know, you, you want to have that main meal, you know, if we get your reservation, we can ensure that you've got something. That's right. I forgot. You're there, you know, if you don't like what's on the menu, there's always the soup and sandwich right. option, which are always good, too. No, and it's a great <coughs> price. And you do get a dessert with that, a soup or salad or and Coffee, a drink. Coffee, tea, exactly. everything. Yeah, you can't. You, I don't know how you, well, you can't be making money off the lunches, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm not so sure we are, price. but that's okay. Yeah. It's, it's I go around they're... town once in a while to have lunch, and I can't get out of the restaurant without spending 15 or $20 just on lunch. No, so. and what's nice is, you know, you don't have to tip the waitresses. They're all volunteers, yeah. or and so we're very fortunate Maybe I should way. start eating more at the seniors. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not a big breakfast person, so it's nice you just have the continental breakfast for a right. dollar. You come in for a cup of coffee and a donut or something. And you can come. 
come in for a coffee. We have muffins and donuts that you can choose from, and so there is that option as well. And so I th I'd say the coffee gets hit pretty well in the morning, and uh, but you can also have tea. Yeah, <laughs> I've had tea there many times, sometimes coffee, but I'm a tea drinker mostly. Um, I'm going to switch topics a little bit because somebody kind of whispered in my ear something about Medicare. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I guess helping to navigate uh, the ins and outs of Medicare is something all seniors need help with. Right. Is and that part of the outreach program? Well, or? outreach, but we have a SHINE. Um, oh, someone shine. comes in from That's SHINE. Right. So SHINE stands for Serving the Health Insurance Needs of Everyone. And so they come in uh, once a week. They come in and they can help you navigate, you know, going through Part B, Part A, what you're choosing, and help you choose for prescriptions what you need for that as well. So we, every week, have someone who can come in, and you do need to sign up for that. A lot of them, and, and anything you see in the newsletter, it'll tell you whether you need to sign up in advance. Um, but we do ask people to sign up for that. Yeah, the once a year, too, with the enrollment period in Medicare, I mean, right. that's just, it's overwhelming how much information there is you have to go through. And so. I'm glad I'm not having to figure it out because yeah. I'm, someone's there to help you because it is a lot. Um, and finding the right thing for, the, for each person is very different. Yeah, and every year I seem to make a mistake with it. I got signed up for something last year that I don't even... What did I do that? Well, then you need to come in. <laughs> and I, well, I did come in, and I thought I was all squared away. But I now I understand. I need to go in every year and talk exactly. to Shine because it does Counselors change. Because it changes, yeah, it does. and it just it gets a little bit overwhelming sometimes. Even though they send out this huge booklet of information, I, I mean, how do you even find time to go through all of that? It's just well, and then you you just it's like anything when you're looking at it. It made sense over here, but then you read this over here and where are you? And so the Shine person can actually help with that. And we have a wonderful woman from Shine who comes in and um, Alice can help you navigate all of that and help you figure it out. But yes, pretty much every year people have to change and, and do make changes. So, yeah. Well, even from right from the beginning when you walk in the center, it's so welcoming and inviting. Len is there sitting in the chair to That's greet right. you and say hello. <laughs> He's always got a smile on his face. And I do want to remind people that if they're volunteering, to, especially to make sure that, or even if they're just attending something, to go up to the screen right. and sign in. And why is that important? Well, that makes a big difference on our funding. Um, as far as state funding, we show a lot of that's based on our senior population numbers. But it also lets us know what is, is working and what isn't. And so mm -hmm. as people sign in, we're able to track what activities are being utilized and what are not. And so for us, it's for reporting purposes when we report to the state and let them know the activity and what things we're doing in Hopkinton. And it does help a little bit with funding, but it also, if we want to go and ask for something, if I can say we've got X amount of people coming and doing activities, it makes a big difference. I know when our pool guys wanted to have a second table, you know, because we have two pool tables in our senior center, and that means that we can now be part of uh, tournaments that are happening between different senior centers. Um, we kept telling them, you've got to sign in. If we can show the numbers, then we can get the second table. And so it does make a difference in what we do and what we can bring to Hopkinton. Okay, that's good. Then I'm glad we talked about it a little bit, because every once in a while I've, when I've come in, I've... Um, I don't have my card, but I can go up to the screen and put my first name and phone right. number and then what activity I'm there for, and it logs me in and helps the numbers. It absolutely, and so we, we do try to, it's nice that we do have a greeter, and because we have two kiosks where people can sign in, we try to now have greeters at both ends so that we can have people say, hey, don't walk past here, you got to sign in. Mm -hmm. So that we know what's going on. Yeah, and a lot happens in that lobby area too. Sometimes the knitting group is there. In the colder months, we have that wonderful fireplace. Uh, the times of the year when you have the raffle with the baskets and the mm -hmm. silent auction. I mean, it's just the whole center, every square inch of it is used so well. And it's so inviting. Well, we're excited about that. I'm glad to hear that because I think it is. And I think when you walk through the door, we made a few changes this year. We had a new new carpeting put in and, and we're looking at a couple other changes in our lobby. 
Um, but it is. It's really a warm place to come to. I, I love sitting in, uh, going into the lobby, standing in front of the fireplace and talking with people. That's a great spot. And it does. It feels like a home. It feels very welcoming. Mm -hmm. And it's not, we do have the people at the front desk who are there to help you. But, you know, we are, we do want you to feel welcome and a part of it. And so anyone, please come up. And if you're new, anyone at the senior center but our greeters are there our front desk people our outreach anyone would take you on a tour and show you around and let you get to know what we have going on you anticipate because i was just about to mention the reception desk and the wonderful people that sit there and welcome you and answer questions for you and i think some of them are volunteers most of them are volunteers, uh, of them are volunteers. and we are very lucky for that um, again our volunteers make it work so well they do a great job too everyone does we're almost out of time and there's so much more i wanted to mention because you have indoor and outdoor activities <laughs> right. when the weather permits but uh, i'll leave it up to you if there's any last thoughts you want to share oh i'd say you've got to come up and check us out we have so much going on and i really would tell everyone don't hesitate you may be new you may be in town forever please come up uh, we want to share it with you and we want to hear what you need um, I can't stress that enough. I can't bring programs if I don't know that you want them. So we're hoping to hear and we want to hear from you. Well, and we'll give a shout out too about the transportation to right. different events and the van that there is and sometimes even a pickup if you need to be picked up. Exactly. And to if us, you so. can't drive yourself, certainly we call us and we'll get you up there. Yeah. Well, that's great. Thank you so much for being with thank us you. today, Amy. And thank you for joining us for this program and hearing about Amy and all of her work. For more information about the Hopkinton Senior Center, visit their website listed at the end of the show. For more information concerning All About Hopkinton on HCAM.TV, visit the website. If you or someone you know is having an impact on our community, we want to hear about it. Send an email to Jim at HCAM.TV and perhaps you'll see them sitting here and sharing their story with us on All About Hopkinton. I'm Mary Arnott and thanks for watching. Are you worried about letting your child take the wheel? Maybe you should also be worried about what you're doing behind the wheel. Have you ever sent a quick text just this once? Well, that might turn into a catastrophic accident. Monkeys see what monkeys do. If you do it, why wouldn't your child? In a child's brain, almost all things their parents do, they can do too. 78% of teen drivers' surveys text and drive. 59% said their parents do it too. Stop texting and driving because if you do it, your child will too.